This song has been sung by the people of the Talawa tribe of Northern California for hundreds of years. But like many tribal languages in the Pacific Northwest, it's in crisis. With only a handful of fluent speakers left, the Talawa language, Deniweya, is endangered. Will Talawa go the way of other tribal languages and become extinct? Some Talawans were determined that wouldn't happen. My name is Cheryl Steinrock. I'm a member of the Smith River Rancheria, and I work in the culture department, language department. Cheryl's mother, Eunice Bomlin, and fellow tribal members were the first to take action, first to document and preserve the language. With the assistance of a linguist from Humboldt University, they began recording the language every Wednesday evening at the local high school with community elders. With all the recordings that we had done in that Wednesday class for years, they were able to compile these dictionaries. They're um, full of information all the way from topics of villages, um, ancestors' names, um, stories, songs, prayers. The dictionary that we are using currently is the one that Lauren Metlachne had done in 2006. So this is like a reference manual. Anyone who ever wanted to learn Dani Weya, if you studied this book, you would know. It talks about the grammar, talks about spelling, talks about sounds, phonology, everything in here. The dictionary ensured that vital cultural knowledge was preserved, but the Talibu people wanted to go further. They wanted to bring the language back to life, to revitalize it. Two people who are fluent in Dani Weya are Lauren Melashne, who wrote the dictionary, and his son, Paiwa who is a Ph.D. student at the University of Oregon. Like, if you're not using the language, you're not speaking the language, if you're just talking about the language, you're not going to learn it if you just talk about it. If you want to revitalize the language, it needs to be usable by people in their everyday lives, but you don't have all of the words for everything that people would want to talk about in their everyday lives. I, at home, <clears throat> have become more of a, a crusader saying, we've got to create vocabulary, mm -hmm. period. You know, well, and, our, and our language has the tools to do it. Well, I mean, you know? even before you started learning language, they came oh, yeah. up with, like, <laughs> phone. Yeah. Yeah, metnadra, and it's someone talks. So like now we have a lot of which is a hand, hand phone. phone, which is a cell phone, right? Yeah. The development and introduction of new vocabulary, cell phone, email, iPod, is not always well received by traditionalists, those who would prefer to maintain the language in its original form. We only have one word in English called love, you know, basically. But we know the difference between loving your girl versus your child somehow. See, that's the culture of the language. But in our language, you have to say Ranshran versus Yulte. You, you know, when you want your girlfriend, it's Yulte, and you want your, to love your child, it's Ranshran. So there's two different verbs for it, you know. And that's, again, the mind of the language. The next step was to teach the younger generation. They wanted the children to use Deniweya. My mom, Eunice Bauman, was a visionary. And she sat down with her nieces and sisters at that time and said, we need to start teaching these kids. We need to start letting them know things or it's going to be lost. You know, I want my kids to know the language. I want them, I don't, I don't want them to like have it be a choice. Uh, it's just, I want it just to be who they are. At the Head Start Preschool, the Talawa community utilizes a teaching method known as accelerated second language acquisition to educate their students. Delaha. Delaha. So today we are going to learn Talawa. It builds that confidence level where, where you're not worrying so much about the sound you're making or whether you're saying it right. That kind of all goes away, it kind of melts. One of the concepts we came up with here in our department is to take some of the children's stories and translate them into Dani Weya.
you know the connection between culture and all that for me personally I got that a long time ago when I was a kid how important it is to know the language how integrated it is in the culture and the history how all those things are layered together and woven together and there's no separation I mean there's always hope in the kids right the next generation and as far as as long as we keep working hard and leave something for them to work with and you know there's always hope Oh, hey, ho.